<laughs> oh, hi there. I'm Max Scovel for Rev3 Games. Do you like punching piñatas? Well, if you like punching piñatas, you might like guacamole. If you take it at face value, Guacamele is a 2D Metroidvania-style action platformer in which you play as a Mexican wrestler who runs around fighting monsters, and while that is a valid description, it doesn't quite do the game justice. In Guacamele, players take on the role of Juan, a humble agave farmer. When his childhood friend and potential love interest, El Presidente's daughter, is kidnapped by the evil Carlos Calaca, Juan is cast into the underworld, where he comes across a magic mask that lets him become a luchador. While the plot could have settled for being a campy homage to video game cliches of a bygone era, Guacamele keeps things fresh with some very amusing writing, lots of visual gags in the background, and pop culture references both old and new. If you were a fan of Drinkbox Studios' previous Tales from Space games, you'll be happy to know Guacamele has that same vector-based paper cutout aesthetic. Juan's combat animations reminded me a bit of Brock Sampson's fight scenes in The Venture Brothers, a goat who turns into an old man seemed like a nod to the Emperor's new groove, and the Day of the Dead skeletons should sit right with fans of Grim Fandango. And while familiar motifs like this could have made the game feel derivative and pandering, Guacamele managed to incorporate them subtly enough that it still managed to maintain its own unique visual style. As the name Guacamele might suggest, you run around using melee attacks to beat the crap out of skeletons, giant armadillos, chupacabras, and so forth. Destroying certain familiar-looking statues throughout the game will unlock new moves, such as the Rooster Uppercut or the Frog Slam. And with each new move unlocked, the complexity of combos that can be strung together increases. New moves aren't just useful in combat, either. They're crucial in traversing the game's numerous tricky platforming sequences. I've always been a fan of the ceremony of getting a new ability or weapon in a video game, and the frequency with which Guacamele doles these out is really satisfying. There's always the feeling that a new wrestling move is right around the corner, and in classic Metroidvania fashion, unlocking new powers will give you access to new areas, as well as hidden items in previously explored areas. In addition to melee combat, one of the core mechanics in the game is the ability to switch back and forth between the land of the living and the land of the dead, and there's a fair amount of strategy to fighting enemies in two dimensions at once, as well as literally hopping between dimensions to traverse certain areas. Another slightly less core mechanic is the ability to turn into a chicken, which is reminiscent of Samus's morph ball technique, except funnier because you turn into a chicken. There are a handful of boss fights in the game which pay homage to ones in games like Castlevania and Mega Man, and which should provide a solid challenge to the average gamer, though I imagine the hardcore retro crowd might scoff at them. But luckily for anyone craving further challenge, completing Guacamelee on normal mode will unlock a hard mode as well. Aside from a few sequences that had me cursing a blue streak and declaring my utter hatred for video games as a general medium, Guacamelee's difficulty is fairly well balanced and its learning curve is excellently paced, doing a great job of teaching you how to play the game without dumbing itself down. If you've got a friend over, Guacamelee supports two-player local co-op, which is basic drop-in, drop-out. Player 2 will take control over the mysterious female luchador, Tostada, and if you can't find a spare controller, a PlayStation Vita can be used for Player 2 via remote play. Oh, and hey, I almost forgot. Guacamelee is a cross buy title, so if you pick up the PS3 version, you have the Vita one, and vice versa. Even better, it's cross-save, which allows for an absolutely seamless transition from a portable game to a console game. Aside from some minor control differences, it is the same overall experience. My initial playthrough clocked in at around 8 hours, with only 50% of the game's secrets uncovered, which isn't too bad. I have no doubt that some people will rush through it much faster, but it's very much the type of game that encourages speedruns. Talking about Guacamelee doesn't do it enough justice. It's very much a game that needs to be played to be enjoyed properly, as it feels like a genuine love letter to the action platforming genre. While Drinkbox Studios could have settled for lifting a handful of mechanics from a few 8 or 16-bit classics and slapping on a fresh coat of paint, the amount of care put into Guacamelee goes above and beyond the call of nostalgia to make it very much its own, and everything the game sets out to do, it pulls off with flying colors. Also, you can turn into a chicken. Five out of five. So yeah, Guacamelee is a $15 game, and it's uh, it's worth every penny. I had a lot of fun with it, and I'm somebody who's been bitching for an HD remake of Super Metroid for quite some time. If you have any questions or comments about the game, be sure to leave them below. You can find me on Twitter, I'm Max Scovel, and for more of our gaming coverage, check it out, Rev3 Games, right here. We have a lot of fun. Right now, I gotta get back to work.